Hey guys, and welcome to this Affinity Design tutorial. Uh, today, I want to try to show you how I go about creating glass and bottles and giving this like glass, stylized glass feel to the stuff I do. If you've checked out my other videos, you see we've done a lot of different potions and glass inspired artwork. So yeah, I want to just show you guys how I go about it. The few simple tips and tricks I have and yes hope this will be helpful for you so with that said let's just kick it off okay so I've just started with uh, blank canvas transparent uh, 2048 by 2048 because that's just how I like to work so we're gonna start off with just a background drag a square all over and leave that. go to the uh, Gradient fill tool. And I find I have snapping on, very aggressive snapping. So I, I always like to find where centers and stuff are. And we're just gonna go from center and just go out, change the type to radial. So you see, you get this nice going uniformly out. Put this to a very light blue. And this to a very dark. This is a bit too gray for me. If I also move this. There's a bit of tweaking what I want. I'm going to push this down very aggressively so it just gets sort of a speck in there. And you can also help in by pushing this down. Holding shift uh, doesn't really matter since it's radial, but if you hold shift, it snaps into going in the same direction. Which might be nice. And push it way down. A bit darker. Like that. And then we're gonna go and create a circle. Start from middle, just going out. Make this just very, very light blue. Almost white. Then we're going to duplicate this a couple of times and I'm going to call this for backup. And just hide you because we're going to use that several times. <laughs> and then we're going to take the latest one, drag it down. I also can do if we give it just a very dark fill. And this is going to decide our thickness of the glass. Uh, so just Move it in as much as you want, depending on how thick you want it. I think uh, something like this. Probably good. Gonna select both of them and then I'm gonna subtract. And I have hotkeyed this to uh, control shift D. But you also have the button up there if you don't have that. Then we're just gonna call this outer glass. Then we're gonna duplicate this a couple of times to back up, uh, move it up. We can do the same thing. It's just black. And this one we're gonna just, if you hold down shift and move your mouse to the left, you will see it moves in a straight line. And I'm gonna make this a bit easier to distinguish as well. So I'm gonna make it just dark gray. Just so we can see which circle is which now. <laughs> I'm going to move you to something like this. I'm going to move you on top. Also a bit easier like that. I'm going to remove you. Subtract again. White. Set you to screen. And then opacity down to 20%. And then you see you get this nice glare that sort of creates cheats a bit into the form of it all. Once again, we're gonna duplicate the backup, move this up here, not nest it, unhide it, and now we're gonna set the fill to transparent and the stroke to white. And then I like to move it down a bit. And we're gonna make, I like to keep them, give them like this thick, 
border because we're gonna create a highlight but this again depends on what you want how we want it uh yeah middle there is nice and then finding a nice thickness to it then i'm gonna go around and add some points so i'm gonna add a point there is probably just good to have one i'm gonna add one there and one there Oh, sorry, I have to convert it. So now this has control enter, but if you go in to layer and convert to curves, because uh, when you have this just ellipse shape, you can't really do much with it. You can't really access the different vertices here. And do what you want with if you make a shape in pen tool. But if you convert it to curves, you get all that nice functionalities. Then we're gonna delete these two. We're gonna select all these and then we're gonna choose break curves. And what this will do is it'll take this shape and break it up as you see into individual shapes. So here we have this line we can delete and we can leave this middle part and now you see we have left with these nice specs and actually i think i want to move you a bit up like that maybe a bit too much something more like this And I've already set my um, stroke to having this uh, rounded cap. I think default is something like this or this. Uh, but you can change that shape up here. And then I'm going to move you guys a bit more in. And I'm going to just fill a bit around with the shape. Uh, this is because when we take this in, or when we do it like this, we, we have the curvature of the outer layer, which is a bit wrong in the perspective. So I like to just go in and tweak this a little bit. Now we have the shape and a bit of the feel to the glass with these specs and the outer rim, I was going to say. <laughs> this outer glass shape. Uh, I'm going to group all of you guys into spec and highlights. Then we're going to duplicate this layer back again. And now we're going to do a little hack because I want to create that transparent glow kind of thing around and I haven't found a really good way of doing this in Affinity Designer uh, just using this shape I would end up having outer glow in here uh, so I'm going to show you a little hack I found so I'm going to set because if I set the fill to zero now so we're going to add this effect I'm going to show you what I mean so we're going to add this nice glow And then I want to say, okay, but I don't want a color back there. I just want that glow. So I'm going to set no fill. But then the glow disappears. What I usually do then, so I go in. And I set the fill to black. And we got that glow back again. And then I set the layer to add. Now, since add only works with lighter values... Having a complete black fill means that it will do nothing on layers below. We can still get this nice glow that follows the shape without having that black bit in. That a bit nicer edge. Now we're going to go over to creating sort of the 
background of the glass so now we have the front and we have the specs and the highlights and we have the glow around so now we're going to create the illusion of it something being in the background so what i want to do then is i'm just going to start off by setting it up to 20 percent and color dodge then we're gonna go in and i think i'm gonna try this Or pinkish color to get that just I just like this like purple deep purple kind of that like color and I feel like fits very well with um theme of the galaxy going on here I think I'm actually gonna adjust you a bit down you're a bit bright and force you a bit more up Like that. So now I want to create. So now we have, we sort of have the base shape going. Now we have we have the the glass feel and look to it. So now we're gonna just go in and fill it in a bit. And I want to create some stars. I'm just gonna create a rectangle. Keep it squared. Give it. Colored field. I see yellow. Remove this stroke. I'm going to convert it to curves. Then we're going to just go around and move this in. If I move you to the center of the document, I also get these nice snapping lines here. With this nice little shape, that was a bit, a bit harsh. Right there to 45, and then we see that this wasn't as good. down and then we're also gonna take we have this uh nice star tool as well we're gonna move you down to four then we can play around with like this in radius to get the bit of this and outer circle around the out Then I'm also gonna make a very simple one like that. So what I'm gonna do now first is I'm gonna group them, call these stars. Then I'm gonna duplicate the backup layer. Again, I'm gonna call this outer glow. Glass uh, back sides. We duplicate back a player call it uh interior holder just what I like to call it. We're gonna set the fill to transparent. Then we're gonna add drag these stars in and nest them into there. The reason why we're doing this is that now I can start placing this around. I can put you something like there and then if I control click and drag I duplicate it while I drag but also I can't now place anything outside or I can place it outside but you can't see it because it only shows the interior that's what's really nice with nesting layers just gonna go around adding a bit of this around rotating a little bit and you just go around to find like where you want 
where you feel that your stuff looks the best. So I think I like something like this. I'm going to select all of them. Go to effects and give them an outer glow. I'm going to color pick their color. Just push this white up a bit. Then we just do a little bit of radius to get that little bit of glow. In nice. And as a final thing, I, I like, I feel like this is good. And in my eyes, I like the, I feel we need, we have nailed the glass look of it. Um, but in my opinion, it lacks a bit still. So what I want to do is I'm going to add an ellipse there. Give it a purplish color. Something like that. I'm going to give you 10% opacity. And color dodge in here. Maybe I need a bit brighter. The thing we call dodge, the brighter, the more it affects. Almost a bit like add. It just works a bit differently. Then we're gonna move you down there. I want this gla sort of gas. Clusters. That sort of gives a bit more texture to our little galaxy here. I'm gonna call you cluster. Another one. I'll give you here. And something to keep note of is that if you when you rescale one object. You see, uh, if you hold control, it does it uniformly, or shift, I mean. It keeps that circle, and if you hold control, it goes from center out. But if you want to do a group, it by default scales uniform and keeps the shape. So if you hold in then shift, it does sort of the opposite of what you would expect. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, 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 let's just put this there and I'll make this one a bit bigger. I'm gonna duplicate you. I'll make it bigger down there. And I want your colors. I like the shade of it. I just want you to be more like green. And there we go. I hope that was useful for you guys. Now I would love to see what you guys come up with and what you create. So feel free to tag me on Instagram or on Twitter or wherever. Links to Discord, Twitter and Insta is in the description below in the little doobly-doo. If you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover next on how I would do stuff in Affinity Designer, feel free to leave them in the comments below now if you did find this useful and like this video feel free to drop a like or a subscription uh, it really do help out so once again thank you so much for watching this tutorial and good luck out there